In this video, we're talking about severe weather once again in the Great Lakes region. Also, Tropical Storm Fred is official and gathering strength in the Caribbean. And some of the forecast models look pretty concerning. Welcome back, y'all. Ryan Hall here with the weather forecast. Southern Wisconsin and Northern Illinois just cannot get a break from the severe weather. From the tornado outbreak on Monday to the severe weather yesterday, they have been experiencing non-stop insanity in the atmosphere. Now, today we are looking at more big storms for that exact region, but the impacts will be felt in Michigan and other places as well. We got quite a bit to talk about today, so let's go ahead and start talking about the weather. All right, here's a big old look at the United States of America. And of course, it sticks out like a sore thumb, our big track for Tropical Storm Fred. That's right, last night it officially became Tropical Storm Fred, uh, just south of Puerto Rico here. We currently have winds around 40 miles an hour and a central pressure of 1,009 millibars, okay? So this is a weak tropical storm right now, but we are expecting it to continue to be a tropical storm as it goes all the way up towards Cuba. It's gonna ride the space between Cuba and Florida, remain a tropical storm, and possibly make landfall somewhere on the panhandle of Florida. Now, obviously, this can still change, and we're gonna talk a lot more about this here in a second, but this video is gonna start off with our storm system up here in the Great Lakes region. Once again, as severe weather is expected today. In fact, while I'm filming this, and probably, you know, before the main outbreak starts, if you're watching this up here in Indiana, Illinois, Ohio, uh, Michigan, this area, uh, you guys are probably already seeing some storms off and on. That's not the main event, okay? That's still coming. Let me show you on the weather models. All right, here's a look at the NAM 3 kilometer model. We are zoomed in on the Ohio Valley region right now. If you want to keep up with the time, it's up here in Eastern Daylight Time. Uh, so we're starting off around 10 a.m. around the time this video should go up. And once again, we're going to have some scattered showers and thunderstorms through Illinois. You can't really see them on this model, but they'll be there. Uh, and also into Ohio and Indiana, okay? We might see some stuff pop up over here um, on the eastern side of Lake Michigan in southern Michigan as well. So if you get a big storm this morning, uh, you know, don't think that, you know, oh, well, that must be it. That's all that we're gonna see today. No, there's gonna be more, and uh, I'm gonna show you right here. Now, keep in mind, there is a slight risk and an enhanced risk of severe weather today through much of the Great Lakes region. Now, that enhanced risk is really focused right there in Michigan, and that's gonna be because of, once again, the threat for a lot of wind today. But there's also a little bit of an elevated chance for tornadoes in this region right here today. So uh, we're going to look at the possibility of that right here in a second. First, let's track these storms on our simulated radar. Uh, let's put this into motion. And as you can see, as we get all the way into 3 p.m., really, we're just going to see some isolated one-off showers and storms popping up across uh, the Great Lakes region down into the Ohio Valley. We might have a little uh, outflow boundary of some stronger storms pushing down through Dayton, uh, possibly making it all the way down into Portsmouth and Cincinnati. Uh, these aren't expected to be much of anything at all. Really, what we're watching is there's a little bit of a trough coming down right here. It's going to spark off some storms right here. And once again, they're quickly going to turn into a big squall line of storms. And we're probably going to experience some straight line damaging winds uh, through southern Wisconsin, northern Illinois, across Lake Michigan and into Michigan as well. And I, it may even make it as far down as into Indiana. We'll see here in a second. Let's watch these storms pop off. As you can see here, 4 p.m., we've got maximum instability out here. Once again, we're looking at surface convective available potential energy levels uh, above 5,000. Now, yesterday, the models were showing something similar to this, but we actually broke six or 7,000 CAPE in some areas, which is absolutely unbelievable. So, you know, whenever you get above 6,000 CAPE, man, you are really rocking it with the instability out there. So once again, we're going to be in that sort of situation today. And as you can see, as we push this forward, it's really going to eat that CAPE up. And uh, that's what's going to cause the storms. All right. Another thing we have to look at in this particular situation, your weather setup is the lower level jet stream okay you can see there's a little bit of a divot right here in the heights okay there's a there's a tiny little baby trough <laughs> and on the southeastern side of that trough we are going to be experiencing some southeasternly uh, winds and then as you can see we're going to see some very intense uh, lower level jet stream winds possibly around 60 or 70 knots there right where those storms will be forming up okay and you can see that carries all the way into Michigan uh, through much of Wisconsin into Illinois and uh, maybe even all the way down into Indiana. So these places right here, especially in the beginning stages of these storms where you see those browns and those whites, that's where that lower level jet stream is screaming hard enough to where if we do get supercellular thunderstorms, even if they're embedded in a line, they can root up and interact with that and spin rapidly enough to cause a tornado. So let's watch all those ingredients come together on the radar here. As you can see around 6 p.m., that's 5 p.m. Central. 
Uh, we're going to see some really strong storms around Milwaukee, all the way down into Madison, Wisconsin, okay? And at this point, you, there is a tornado threat, but I really do think the main threat here, because of the mode of these storms, because the fact they're going to congeal together so quickly, there's so much cape, there's so many storms going to form so quickly, <laughs> they're all just going to bunch together. Uh, I think the main threat's going to be a definitely damaging winds, okay? So uh, even though we do have that tornado threat out there, don't let your guard down if there's not a tornado warning for your area. Severe thunderstorm warning you know these storms can have hurricane force winds in them and that's that's going to cause damage um probably more for you than a tornado would because the odds of you getting hit by a tornado are astronomically low even if there's a big tornado outbreak but the odds of you getting hit by this giant wall of wind uh are, are pretty high so make sure you stay weather aware today and keep that in mind as we go forward here we are at 9 p.m this looks like uh it's probably going to be the most intense time for the storms to be going off once again up here in in Michigan on the northeastern side of that uh, that line of storms especially if you see it kind of curl up like this on radar later uh, up here is where we can also look for some embedded supercells that possibly cause uh, tornadoes uh, during the overnight period tonight so from seven eight nine all the way into midnight uh, in this portion of, of Michigan right here uh, and, and even eastern portions of Wisconsin look out for the possibility of an isolated tornado or two but even without the tornadoes it's gonna be a pretty interesting night with very strong winds as this huge squall line of thunderstorms uh, is you know hundreds of miles long at this point at 11 p.m. and causing damage probably through the Chicago region through the suburbs of Chicago uh, down towards Ottawa Illinois and then even maybe into southern Wisconsin and into Indiana near the uh, South Bend area okay so let's watch this thing all the way through it's still pretty strong tonight around 1 a.m. but I'm telling you these storms are going to be completely cape based all right they are being driven by the convective available potential energy out there and when the Sun goes down that Cape goes down as well so I would say that around this time especially around 1 a.m. but before these storms make it to Peoria for example or Indianapolis I think they're really gonna start rapidly deteriorating and uh, I don't think there'll be much of anything to worry about especially once we get into the early morning hours tomorrow on Thursday so let's keep it going here the severe weather threat is gonna let up a little bit on Thursday as you can see we do have some more storms popping up later in the day tomorrow uh, we're uh, this is 8 p.m. on Thursday we got another line of storms possibly moving through northern Illinois near the Chicago region uh, and this right here actually looks like it's gonna be really long okay it's associated with a little bit of a, a boundary here that's gonna spark storms possibly from Kansas into Missouri all the way through Illinois and uh, Michigan some of these storms could definitely be severe okay but this doesn't look like it's gonna be the widespread severe weather outbreak uh, similar to what we're seeing today okay so just uh, make sure you have a weather app and watch the uh, the storms as they form up tomorrow into the overnight hours it looks like some of them could be pretty strong maybe some hail makers here in Indiana and Ohio later tomorrow into the early morning hours on Friday also a lot of rain here in uh, Missouri and southern Illinois as these storms once again are Cape based and they die out as we get into the overnight hours now we're gonna go into Friday here we make it to 2 p.m. on Friday but as you can see there's nothing really going on on the NAM three kilometer model in order to see uh, exactly what's gonna happen next on Friday we have to lower our resolution a little bit we've been talking about Friday now for a little while for the Ohio Valley and the mid-Atlantic region right here especially from Pennsylvania down into Kentucky the remnants of this crazy storm that's been going through Wisconsin and Illinois is going to spark up some severe weather for uh, this region on Friday now uh, originally the storm prediction center had a 15% chance of severe weather for this area uh, for Friday but they've since decreased that the day three threat is only a marginal threat right right now uh, but that's very possibly going to go back up to a slight risk maybe even an enhanced risk before we actually get to the event because it does look like we're going to see some storms once again here we are on Friday at 2 p.m. the NAM 12 kilometer model is showing a little bit of convection starting to show up here uh, and it's a little bit further south than what we thought too this is from Columbus Ohio all the way down to Louisville but look at this we're once again dealing with high Cape okay we're talking about four or five thousand joules per kilogram of convective available potential energy across the Ohio River all the way up into West Western portions of Pennsylvania dew points are also going to be pretty high in the mid 70s up here so you know anytime you're forecasting severe weather especially if you're looking for a line of storms to form you want to see this boundary right here okay so we've got low dew points right next to high dew points if there's anything that's going to progress that this way there's going to be storms form along that boundary and that's exactly what we're going to see here uh, just how severe they're going to be I still don't know yet how you know impactful they're going to be I still don't know but what I can tell you is that this definitely looks like it's going to be another straight line damaging wind threat and uh, I think that the tornado
tornado threat's gonna be astronomically low with this because there's really no upper level dynamics that support tornadoes with this storm system at all. At least not right now that, that I'm seeing. But this definitely looks like if you live in this area right here on Friday, we're gonna be dealing with uh, some severe thunderstorms and the main threat's gonna be gusty winds as they move through. So the NAM 12 kilometer, once again, it's a low resolution model, so we can't really see much there, but we're gonna go all the way through. And as you can see, there was a line of storms that went through here, and that's kind of what we're expecting. All right, switching over to the Euro model now, as our storms are moving through the Ohio Valley into the Appalachian region, we are also watching Tropical Storm Fred up here north of Cuba, heading right towards Florida. And according to the Euro model, this storm's gonna hug Florida a little bit more than what some of the other models are showing. So uh, let me show you this. You can see the circulation there. It's pretty weak at this point. Uh, it actually looks like it makes landfall near Miami, according to this model. It kind of stays over the western edge of Florida. There it is near Tampa and Clearwater on Sunday at 5 a.m. And then it might go back over water for a little bit before it makes landfall again uh, in the panhandle of Florida. There is a 1,004 millibar low pressure system. Once again, still a tropical storm at this point. Uh, and then it's going to carry that moisture all the way up into Georgia, through the Appalachian region, and then go back out to sea there uh, south of Long Island and uh, east of the Chesapeake Bay there. So, you know, the Euro model, this is just one model, okay? And if this actually comes to fruition, then we're going to see a very low impact storm uh, with Tropical Storm Fred, okay? Uh, what we really, you, you know, what we really need, if this is going to intensify, is for it to not hit Florida like this. Now, don't get me wrong. If that was to happen, that's a good thing. That means a weaker storm, less impacts. But there is a possibility, and the thing that would make this a strong, more impactful storm is if this goes a little bit further to the west and stays over the Gulf of Mexico longer. And a lot of the other models are actually showing that, okay? So the longer this thing stays in the Gulf of Mexico, and even the further west it goes, uh, the more you know intense the storm's going to become, okay? If it hits here, uh, we're talking about a high-end tropical storm. Uh, maybe a low end hurricane. If it hits down here, we're talking about a weak tropical storm. Now, if it hits over here, we're talking about a hurricane. If it happens to hit over here, um, which is very unlikely at this point, uh, that we could be talking about a very significant hurricane. Uh, so right now, it's all about the amount of time that the Tropical Storm Fred gets to spend in the bathwater over here, that is the Gulf of Mexico. So once again, let's play that through. And as you can see, this is gonna bring a lot of rain to the East Coast. Uh, no matter what happens, it's pretty much gonna do that. And let's take a look at the precipitation there. Yeah, as you can see, uh, you know, there's areas of three to eight inches of rain pretty much along the path of this storm. And that's gonna be the case no matter which way it goes, okay? So if this comes up this way a little bit more, Alabama, Tennessee, Kentucky, you're gonna see more of the rain. If it goes this way a little bit more, you know, it's gonna shift wherever the storm is. So uh, flooding's gonna be a problem with this, um, especially really far inland, okay? This time of year, there's a lot of moisture already floating around in the southeast, uh, let alone a tropical storm bringing up some more. So, uh, you know, we're gonna watch that portion too, but we're mainly concerned about where it's gonna make landfall and whether or not it's gonna strengthen enough to become a hurricane. All right, switching our view a little bit here to the spaghetti plots, okay? We call these spaghetti plots. Uh, there's a lot of different models out there that try to predict where the storm's gonna go. We put them all together here and it shows us all the different solutions, all the different possibilities. And that's kind of where we get that cone of uncertainty from. So, you know, when you see that red cone, it's like, oh, it could go here or anywhere in this area. Uh, it's kind of just like an aggregate of all of the models and all the possibilities put together. And as of right now, really, the models have no idea what's going to happen with this thing once it gets up here into uh, northern Cuba, okay? I think the best track, the most likely track right now is that it's going to ride the northern part of the islands here and then kind of stay away from Florida a little bit and make landfall in the western panhandle of Florida. Once again, that means a stronger storm, okay? Possibly even a hurricane. But as you can see, there's a lot of models that take it way out here, possibly even into Louisiana, and there's an even larger amount of models that do what the Euro does and uh, kind of keeps it close to Florida. So, uh, you know, we're Worst case scenario is it goes in this direction. Best case scenario is it stays over here. Okay, so uh, that's that's kind of what we're looking at right now. And these spaghetti plots, it's gonna change. But this portion out here is just gonna keep being all over the place until the center of circulation is closer to the United States. All right, so once again, we're gonna get an official update from the National Hurricane Center. And the National Hurricane Center is now, once again, officially calling this Tropical Storm Fred, okay? It's moving to the west-northwest at 16 miles an hour. And we expect that to continue to be the case for a little while. Right now, you can see that they're saying that this is gonna 
and we can back down into a tropical depression as it goes over the Dominican Republic and then reform into a tropical storm here near uh, Cuba and Florida and maintain its strength as a tropical storm all the way up until it makes landfall according to the National Hurricane Center here maybe near Panama City Beach but remember this cone of uncertainty has went all over the place all right we're seeing a shift towards the west okay and the further west this goes uh the worse news it is i guess for uh the gulf of mexico now another thing to remember is the thing that is going to make this worse is only if the northern part the top half of this track goes west okay if the southern portion of this track goes west like if this storm decides it's going to do this and literally go right over the middle of cuba there's a chance that it could completely dissipate I mean, honestly, um, like the, the, these islands are kind of like America's shield when it comes to hurricanes and tropical storms, and they do a really good job of just tearing up uh, organized storms in the Atlantic, okay? So if this thing straddles north of Cuba and then goes west and makes landfall somewhere in, in the Gulf states, that's going to be a really bad storm. But if this goes right over the land mass of Cuba and then, you know, it might try to reform, it's not going to be the same. It's not going to have the same momentum, okay? So that, that's very unlikely that that's going to happen, uh, but it's a possibility. And I like to talk about all possibilities here on this channel because I'm not bound uh, by any script. All right. That's all the weather talk I have for you today, guys. If you live in Florida, Alabama, Mississippi, or Louisiana, just go ahead and start preparing for a possible tropical storm. Okay. It's looking like right now, this isn't going to be a major hurricane. Things can change, but I, I definitely don't want to hype it up too much and get you scared if you live out there. Okay. Uh, but the thing is, is we have another storm right behind this one and probably another one right behind that we are entering peak hurricane season and uh it's time to just go ahead and get prepared for this stuff guys there is going to be eventually a hurricane that hits the united states is it going to be really bad i don't know uh is there going to be more than one or five i don't know uh that's why you need to subscribe to this channel right now uh because i'm going to be here with you through every single one of them giving you updates and really going in depth and hoping that you are more prepared because of it thanks for watching guys i'll see you in the next one goodbye Ooh.